The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. As a former New Hampshire state representative who marched with Dr. Martin Luther King in 1963, he currently serves on the New Hampshire Commission for Human Rights. He's a product of Birmingham, Alabama, where at one time he had to guess how many jelly beans were in a fruit jar just to be able to vote. We've come a long way, but we're not there yet. Together we will explore the visible laws, invisible laws, and the structures above and beneath our human surface that keep us reaching for the stars. It is his goal to work with you in putting Nashua back on top to be voted the number one city in the nation again. We are in a crisis situation and that's what we're gonna talk about. I'm Harvey Key. Welcome to Nashua Strong. Hello, Nashua. Back again. <clears throat> I know you miss me, I've missed you too, because COVID-19 is not playing games. If it got you, it got close to you, it will get you again if you're not careful. We are fortunate to live in New Hampshire to have a, a medical team and a governor and some of the officials in our city, our state, to take the scientific approach and keep a lot of us safer than we otherwise would be. I'm happy to be here. I hope you're well. I hope all your families are well, the babies, the grandparents, the extended families and what have you. So welcome back to Nashua Strong. And this is really a treat for me today because I am gonna tell you that we have a young man who grew up here, raised right in the backyard, went away and became a national football player in two or three or four or five teams. I'm not really sure. He's going to correct me. But <clears throat> very few of all of us, males and females now, will get a chance to play in the National Football League. The percentages of those who graduate from college or become strong in high school and what have you is less than 3% that make it to the top National Football League. So we're going to have a little fun with the guy who was raised right here in our backyard. And I, before I ask him any questions, I want to tell you that I am so pleased and honored, excited and proud to have this young man on our show. Because my deal with you out there and around the world is to give, serve, and ask for no returns with the deepest amount of humility. That was when I started the show because I couldn't vote in Birmingham, Alabama. And when I got to Nashua, I got a chance to vote and also became a state representative. So how excited can I be? I have a young man here, and I said that before. <clears throat> His name is Kendall Reyes, born right here in Nashua, New Hampshire. And let me introduce you to Kendall. Hi, Kendall. Welcome to our show. Welcome back home. We're yeah. going to put the red carpet out for you, and we want those young people to listen to you, some of the stuff you're going to talk about. Absolutely. Harvey, thank you for, for having me. Uh, this, this is a huge honor, and I'm glad we got to be able to chat a little bit, and you, you kind of give me your background. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed, and uh, you know, can't wait to learn, learn a little bit more about you. Okay. Not, not, we'll not, do uh, that not just down about the road. me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, that's Kendall. The first question I'm going to ask him mm -hmm. is, where did you grow up and who did you grow up with in Nashua? So I grew up in uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, right right north of Greeley Park. I uh, lived in the same house pretty much my, my, my whole childhood. I grew up mainly with, with my mom and my, my older brother. Then uh, my, my stepdad came in into the mix uh, a little bit later, later on. So uh, Are they yeah. still in town? So my mom and uh, my mom and stepdad, they moved right across the bridge okay. uh, into Hudson. But I mean, they're greater Nashua, yeah. you know, whatever you want to call okay. it. But uh, they're, they're still local. And um, my brother, he's lived down in Florida, he lived down in California. But now he's, he's back uh, in the local area as well. So it's, it's nice, you know, all being all being close. Yeah, absolutely. You just have one brother. 
Yeah, just one brother. I do have a, a stepbrother and stepsister that oh, okay. live down in Florida. Um, I, I almost hate even saying this step, but you know, I got a brother and sister down okay, in Florida great, too. Great. Um, Are you married? I am married. You know, me. because I didn't know that. But uh, you know, when I accidentally touched your, my phone and got you on, and you said, just send the questions. I'm trying to put them to sleep or something <laughs> like that. I oh, said, when well, I texted you. Yeah. That's true. He has some kids, yeah. and then so I apologize for that. No, 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 it's okay. But no, I, I just, was, I just wanted to text you back because yeah. I, I saw the missed call, so I just wanted yeah, to let you yeah. know that I, you know, from seven thirty, eight thirty, you know, that's, that's. How old are your kids? My kids are. I mean, they're pretty much six, three, and two. <laughs> yeah, that's so, great. Man. Yeah, yeah. So it's, just, it's a lot of fun. A lot yeah, of fun. A sure. lot of running around. Six, three, and two. How yeah. about that? Yeah. Now, um, you went to high school here. Yeah, yeah, but went to high school. And the high school here was? Yeah, so when I was in ninth grade, so ninth grade, you know, you got the, the three middle schools, uh, Penn and Chuck, Elm Street, and Fairground. So ninth grade was still in the, the junior high at that time, but when I went to 10th grade, it's when they officially split the schools. So I did 10th, 11th, and 12th at North. So I was, a, I was a Titan through and through. But ninth grade, technically, I ran for the one high school when I, when I ran now, track. Now, you played football. Yep. In high school. Yep. In what position did you play? Oh, man. I mean, I guess a little bit of everything, but uh, mainly uh, I would say probably like wide receiver, tight end on offense. But defensively, I mean, I played safety, outside linebacker, defensive line. Yeah. But most of my time, I would say outside Who was linebacker. Your coach? Uh, coach Roby, Jason Roby. Yeah, yeah, I heard of that name. Yeah, yeah. And did you learn something from the coach? Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. No, there was. Uh, we, we, we had a great time. We had a really, really good team. I would say, uh, especially my junior year, we're probably the best team to not make the playoffs. It was, uh, we got, we got, you know, we lost a three-way tie, but... Um, Who did you play? No, so it was just based on record. Yeah. So I think all, all of us were either all five and three, we're all six and three, but uh, it was just the way it worked out. You know, the other teams ended up going to the playoffs, but... Uh, no one, no one wanted to play us. Yeah. And they, no, so they're they're they're, they're excited um, that that we didn't go. I mean, defensively, we we're. I think out of our defense, we had almost everyone made all state in wow. in some fashion, whether it be first, second, or, yeah. or honorable mention. It was a great defense is the best offense. Per, yeah, something, yeah, something yeah. Like yeah. That? And you don't offense doesn't need to score a lot of points when you don't <laughs> give up a lot. You know you. Could, you look at teams like the Ravens, and you know they won a Super Bowl. Well, look at the yeah. Clippers. Best offense. What's his name? Left there and went with the Seven Sixers. That's basketball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, de offense. You know, is is good for the fans, but defense wins championships yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, no, it was really cool. And uh, that class of guys. I mean, I'm still so close to 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 all those guys, and we still keep in contact. So, uh, uh, many, many of them still around here. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know. Good, good core of them are, are still around, you know. Then you got a few that live in different parts of the the country, but uh, yeah, absolutely, no, we. Uh, now you got a scholarship from your high. No, no, let, I want to ask you: when you finished high school, yeah, you had to get a job. What was your first job when you got out of high school? Got out of high school, yeah. so I worked while I was in high school. Then right when I uh, when I went to college, I was you know I was just a full time athlete. But during the summer, I would work. But in high school, where did I work? I worked at Market Basket. Okay. Um, where else did I work? Uh, what's the? I can't even think of the name. I worked at Papa Gino's and now uh, Quiznos. <laughs> okay. So yeah. so those are three places I worked in high school. Then when I was in college during the summers, I worked at FedEx one year. That that was wild. Uh, you know, you made a lot of money. I made I made decent money when I was at FedEx, but it was so I, I was in college doing my football workouts all day, and they saw how big I was, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, Kendall, you could you could do this truck by yourself." Right, right. I was like, "Man, <laughs> I was so I mean, I did it. I signed up for it. I did it, but I was like, that that was a one and done for me. So yeah. definitely, uh, kudos and respect to you know everyone doing doing that on the daily. Were you uh, drafted? Did you play for UConn? Yeah, so I played. I played uh, football at UConn, and you got drafted. Yep. yep. By whom first? I uh, was drafted by the San Diego Chargers in, in okay. 2012. Yeah, yeah, so it was. Uh, I had a lot of fun. For, were you? Which? What was your number of draft? Uh, you, oh, I was. Uh, what was I? I was taking the second round. I was the 49th draft pick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. And that paid off. How long were you with the 49ers? I was with uh, the Chargers. Chargers. Uh, I was there for four years. 
Then, uh, then I signed with, uh, to the Redskins. Then, uh, then I signed with the Chiefs, and Chiefs is unfortunately where I where I got hurt. What hurt? What how, did you get a pulled uh, hamstring? Uh, no, I, I wish it was only a pulled hamstring. What'd you get? Uh, but long story short, um, I had a pretty significant wrist injury. Yeah. Uh, torn ligaments, uh, shifted bones, and um, you know after a few surgeries. Yeah. And uh, you know I had to miss another season, and uh, you know my wrist is never the same, and still yeah. still yeah. isn't. But I mean I could do I could do most functions, so I'm I'm just glad uh, I I at least have that. Yeah. Um. So I officially had to hang up you know football in 2018. Um. Then, but uh, I definitely you know. Loved it, enjoyed it, enjoyed the run, but uh, just like anything, I mean, you could only play sports for for so right. long, it's, and yeah. I'm glad I you know had my education to fall back on once uh Great. once that was done. Great, yeah, that's marvelous, man. Well, congratulations on retiring, yeah, uh, because you could even get further hurt and debilitated where you can't do a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. um, no, I'm definitely blessed that it was just only what it was. I mean, I definitely you know had some some guys that I played with that are. You know, some of them, you know, got pretty banged up, and you know, talk about. I luckily didn't have any serious head injuries, and um, you know, I, I've had a couple teammates that have, and it's, you know, it's, you know, it's it's unfortunate, but um, you know, we yeah. we all know what Great. we signed up for hey, too. Kendall, so. you know, uh, we haven't spoken much. Yeah. But uh, I think my uh, history says, and what I do with young people in the city, and a crowd around the world. Yeah is ask them to play a sport. And I want to ask you, in your opinion, those who play sports, one, two, or three, or single sports, yeah. are more apt to go to college than those who do not play a sport, do you think? Um, I'm not, I, I would say just based on my experience, a lot, of, a lot of the people I did play sports with did have a good chance of going to college just just because even even to play high school sports your your grades had to be you know at a certain point you know and I, i'm sure that those standards are, are even higher now so yeah i mean i just i guess based off of that just knowing that you had certain requirements that that, that you had to have just to even play in high school i had, I had this in mind like respect mm -hmm. discipline yeah consistency with homework and being on time Oh, absolutely. And this is some of the things that you had to do if you played football yeah. with a major league, a major uh, national league football. You had to be on time. You had to work out. You had to do those things because whether you liked it or not. Yeah. And that was a requirement yeah. if you wanted to stay and get paid. Absolutely. And the pay was sort of a, important, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, pay was definitely important, but just to be able to play, I mean, that 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 was everything. And uh, it's funny that you mentioned that, you know, being on time. I still, to this day, I have dreams that, like, I'm late for a meeting, you know, for a football meeting. So, like, I mean, high school, college, or, or anything, especially college, like, when you miss, like, a meeting, yeah. oh, man, yeah. the the punishment for that is, like, or even if you're you're late, I mean, in college, it was... You know, you either got to do 6 a.m. runs or extra study hall. And obviously in the NFL, they they, they, they hit your wallet. Yeah. And uh, no, no, no one wants to lose money, uh, big big or small. Is, is, so. that, is that, well, in college, they didn't pay you. But you, no. you're talking when you went to the Chargers. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when I was in college. But, I mean, since they didn't pay you, then you'd have to wake up and do, do you know, physical punishment and or do extra study hall and, you know, we were in that football facility a lot, so yeah. you, you're trying to get out every every chance every chance you <laughs> you can, and uh, uh, so I, it's crazy. I still have dreams, like especially when I'm like I have like a deadline or something. I'm like in my head, I'm having a football dream that I'm late to a meeting. Then I wake up and I'm like, whew! <laughs> thank goodness I was I'm more scared in that dream than I than I am in real life. And you know uh, what? Being that late. carried over into your present occupation. Yeah, and you are not going to be late to make a speech. Yeah, you know, I I think you, I believe Tim at St. Joe's says you were working with the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, and there's an event that you hold now. You've been here how long now? Uh, you mean like live, here back home? Uh, yeah. So I mean, so me and my wife we bought a place, you know, a couple towns over. I mean, I'm still just a few minutes down the road, but uh, uh we bought it in 2016. Then I when I officially retired, I okay. was pretty pretty much back for the last four years. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, but, uh, as you're saying, I, I, 
me and my wife, we've been uh, doing an event since uh, after my first year in the NFL. Uh, so 2013 is the uh, first Ray's Family Field Day that we that we do with uh, with the what boys and girls. Called? Ray's Family Field Day. Ray's Family Field Day. Yeah. Is that advertised and publicized in this city? Uh, yeah, yeah. So once um, you know, once we get everything up and running, so usually like a couple months before we do all the planning, then usually at least two months before is when we start promoting it. Uh, so a lot of times I have a direct website. It's just Ray is FFD for Family Field Day uh, dot com or in lot and it's usually right on the Boys and Girls Club website too. Um, so that should be ready by by the end of May. And uh, last year we we you know we didn't do it obviously with uh, everything going on with the pandemic. But I'm really excited uh, to do it again this year. It's uh, it's going to be smaller obviously with everything that's still going on. But uh, it's going to be good, you know. Um, you know, for for the kids that 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 can go and um, and, and able to do it safely, so we're, we're pretty pumped. So that's going to be July twentieth um, of this year during the week. Um, then we're also going to you know have our you know our fundraiser as well. So I so kind of what I always say, I always separate it. And, you know, I want the kids' day to be about the kids. Then the fundraiser, you know, one of the adults that are you know playing around, and you know hope and hopefully donate some money. Um, you know, I always kept that separate, but, uh, you know, that money goes towards scholarships, um, you know, for, for members of the boys and girls club that are looking to further their education. And, um, and it also sometimes we also done other things too, like with certain nutritional things that, that they wanted to start up and, um, you know, donate to the, to the basketball programs. So we, we always wanted to, to take that money that we raise and, you know, make sure it's going to you know, you know, further help the kids and especially, you know, for them going to college and, um, you know, be able to further education, you know, you take, take someone from the, the club and, uh, man, you know, some of these stories and because, you know, I, I look at the applications, uh, when they send it in and it's just, it's mind blowing. Um, you know, especially some of the situations, you know, some of these members are in, but, uh, so it honestly, it motivates me to, to want to do more, you know, it's uh, it's always a lot putting together an event, um, but it, it's always it's always worth it in the end. And um, you know, I'm really excited to get to, to get back to it this year. Um, so you know, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Well, I, I just hope that we will be able to help you advertise and promote the program. Absolutely. Now, Thank this you. is not just for Nashua. This is statewide. So this year specifically, I think it's just going to be. The Boys and Girls Club members, but in Nashua, in Nat, well, so I mean, the Boys and Girls Club in general, it's not just for Nashua. It's called Greater Nashua. So if you're, if you lived in Hudson and you're a member of the Nashua Boys and Girls Club, yeah. So because of everything that's still going on this year, it's open to members. But they're the Boys and Girls Club. They're always taking on new membership. So um, and what's it, the age uh, limitations of? Uh, so I mean, range. most 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 of the most of the participants are typically, you know, I would say eight to twelve, kind of yeah. like that uh, late elementary, early early middle school age. Um, I, I would say for the for the most part, you know, or the is the age of the participants. Um, so yeah, so for any any you know members or you know any kids that are around, um, so the boys and girls club they're doing a series this summer and. Um, so they they could sign up for the whole summer. They could pick certain weeks. So ours the field day is going to be a part of Carnival Week. So we'll be day two of Carnival Week. So when is that? It's going to be the week. So the event's July twentieth. So that week, the the week of the twentieth in July. Of July, be, yeah. yeah, of July is going to be the whole Carnival Week. Uh, so it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely want you know want um, obviously because not only to go to the event but actually you know join the club because there's so they're doing so many cool things over there. Um, so the, the whole, is the whole summer fee for membership, I believe the fee for the whole year is only like 50 bucks. Yeah. It's yeah. not, uh, it's not Nothing. expensive at, at all. You know, and, and obviously they do it that way, um, to, to make it affordable for, for, for every, um, for every background, yeah. you know? So it's, uh, I mean, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of really good things over there. So I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of it. Well, I am so happy you're here. And I hope you people out there listening to, uh, let me retract you people. We can't say that. That <laughs> means us over here a little bit better. No, I hope all of us 
uh, listening to uh, Randall talk about his past and what uh, it's how he has, uh, I guess, gone up the ladder through the sports arena and that sports route, gotten an education, played football with the very few of those selected and came back to us and sitting here with Harvey called Nashua Strong to share with you some of his, I won't call it secrets because it's no secret. It's a requirement if you're going to matriculate in this country, in this city, in this state, you're going to have to be on time. You're going to have to get an education. You're going to have to really look at the social and ethical laws and regulations and obey them to the extent that you don't have to. But those are the, the, the confines that run our country, run our state, run our city. And what I'm saying to you, this young man got involved with an early age. I'm saying to you out there, please get involved and participate. And I go back a little bit to my uh, uh, denial of voting rights in Birmingham, Alabama in 1956. And all I wanted to do was vote, and they wanted to kill me for it. Take that in. It's almost that way today. So we have to listen closely to being disciplined, respect, consistently doing the homework, being on time, as Randall says. He, he has dreams of being late and cry about it because it was so <laughs> terrible. Now, let me ask you a couple other questions. Um, and I, I don't know if it's a secret. Um, what do you think you learn mostly from your coaches? Man, mo I mean, I honestly, I've learned just about almost everything. Not everything, but a whole lot from them. But, uh, I mean, really, you know, something that I carry with me is you're going you're gonna to get out of something what you put into it. Um, and, you know, that, and that's really, you know, the, the overarching, you know, lesson that everyone wants to be successful or they want to, you know, be able to live out their dreams or whatever it may be. But anyone could do it. Anyone could do whatever they put their what mind to. What do they to. need to do it? Hmm? What do they need to do it? What, you the just, young people out there today who says, I don't want to do this and I don't want to do it. Don't listen to their parents. Yeah. And don't listen to the teachers, and they think they know everything. What would you say to them? I would say, I mean, especially that age, it's you got to have the drive, the passion, um, you know, to, to to lock in and you know find something passionate. You may not even know what it is, but I would say the biggest thing is surrounding yourself with people who who are driven or headed in the same direction that that you want to head in. You know, I like when I was growing up, I had to make some decisions on you know, some people who I associated myself with because I need, you could only do so much on your own. No matter who you are, no matter how successful any individual person is, uh, you look around the people that are around them, then you could tell whether, okay, this person's in, you know, in, the, in the right situation. And then sometimes it may not be your household. You, sometimes you gotta seek out this person, seek out you know, somebody you could, uh, um, you know, that, that could take you under their wing. And a lot of times, and that's where, you know, coaches, you know, they'll fall in because uh, everyone everyone has a different, you know, situation at home. But, uh, you know, playing sports and, you know, being exposed to, you know, people that just care about you and they want to see you succeed. And, and, and success doesn't mean being an all-star. Sometimes success is just means just showing up and being here instead of being somewhere else. And, uh, you know, that's... Uh, you know, that's huge. And I, and I feel like, uh, you know, especially with sports or any extracurricular activity, any positive activity, it could be music, dance, anything, um, any positive outlet, really, uh, for kids, for adults even, to just keep them busy um, and have them be able to drive towards something. I mean, it's so, it's so valuable. And, um, you know, there's the amount of lessons that, that come from it. You know, it's, it's everything. It so. gets to be in your bones. Yeah, in your you know, system. Yeah, exactly. That you're gonna be consistent. You're gonna be respectful. Yeah. You're gonna be uh, dutiful. You're gonna be uh, on time for sure. Yeah. And I hear Randall saying, 
Surround yourself with people who are going to lift you up, not those people who are going to take you down a rabbit hole. Because you go down a rabbit hole, you may not come back. There's a lot of people down in that rabbit hole, and they don't come back. Matter of fact, uh, Randall just said to me that his, I think he didn't say it was his secret, because I was going to ask him, what was his secret to success? And I think he mentioned something, I want to paraphrase what I think he says. Discipline, respect of social and ethical rules and regulations in our society. Being involved, and most of all, be on time. That's what, you got to respect time because you can't get it anymore. Yeah, you don't get Once it back. Once it goes, it's over. Yeah, you don't get it back. And uh, I, I had one last, not the last question, but um, why you come back to Nashua? Um, multiple reasons, but um, so I'm from Nashua. My wife is from not too far down the road. Uh, she's from Atkinson, so where we live, uh, we live in actually in Wyndham, which is- Is that where you live now? Yeah, so okay. we live in Wyndham, but I mean, it's 20 minutes away. Yeah. Um, so it's actually right in the middle from where both of us grew up. Yeah. Uh, and you know, once we, you know, once you have kids, you know, you kind of get called to come home. Uh, so it's kind of why we came back, but uh, you know, it's uh, now that we're here, you know, and, and I'm able to, you know, contribute to you know a place where I grew up and uh, I mean it's it's amazing it's, it's beautiful and um, you know there's there's so much I feel like we all we all have something that that we could give back and um, you know I just want to make sure that you know I'm able to give back what what I've learned um, what I've seen in my experiences and just share them with people because it's uh, you know there's there's a lot that could be learned through other people's experiences um, you know, some lessons you got, you got to be learned by going through them. And a lot of lessons are learned by what other people went through. And, um, you know, so just be able to, you know, shed positive energy. Uh, you know, that's, that's the thing I'm big on is shedding positive energy. There's a lot of things, you know, in our society that kind of want to bog us down, bring us down. Um, you know, I'm all about good things come from positive energy. Absolutely. Now, let me just say this. Yeah. We're going to have to end this, and I don't want to because we can talk about this for a long time. Absolutely. And hopefully you'll get a chance to speak to groups around our yeah. city and influence and motivate them to look at your secret about manifesting time. Mm -hmm. The I want to thank St. Joe's Hospital. I want to thank uh, Tim McMahon. Yeah. And most of all, thank you so much, young man, for coming on to our show and sharing some of your secrets of your success because you are successful and hopefully some of our younger people will catch on to a few of those things and god bless you may your speed be fast and hurried thank you so much <laughs> thank you harvey thank you for having thank me thank you we have you again absolutely and anytime uh, The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.